Hey, how's everyone doing today? So everyone knows who I am. Well, most people. I'm Crystal from Crystal Dawn Culinary. And today I'm super excited to show you a really easy fall festive dessert. Um, so we're using butternut squash in this dessert. We're using a fall squash and this is a great dessert to make for Thanksgiving or Christmas or of course any time of the fall. Um, yeah, not just for occasions. It's good all the time. So I just want to introduce Stephanie. I have my friend Stephanie here today helping me. I'm so excited because usually I do these all by myself. And so this is great to have someone here to help. We're going to be kind of making the recipe together. It's going to make it a little bit more fun and interesting. So I'm really excited about that. So thank you, Stephanie, for joining. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and so I'm just going to go over what we're going to do today. So like I said, we're going to be making a really yummy, stunning fall tart, the butternut squash cream tart. Looking forward to this. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm starving. I saved my appetite. I haven't had breakfast yet. So this is going to be my breakfast. Oh, Sarah's on. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining today. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm really excited to do this recipe. And so we're going to make some butternut squash cream tarts. I did post the full PDF recipe in the Facebook group so that you guys can follow the recipe along with me. And just so that you kind of see what I'm doing and the ingredients I'm using. So we're going to be making three out of the four components today. I'm going to be demonstrating for you how to make the almond spice crust, the butternut squash cream filling, and the coconut whipped cream. And I'm going to show you a different way of doing the coconut whipped cream. So usually I like to make my own from scratch with coconut meat, but I'm going to show you a really simple, easy way to do it. And so I'm excited about that recipe. And uh, we're also going to be serving it with a ginger chocolate sauce. So the ginger chocolate sauce I have in the recipe download for you. And I'm not going to be demonstrating that just because we have a lot to go through and I want to respect everyone's time. And so I'm going to just kind of talk through the ginger chocolate recipe, chocolate sauce recipe with you guys. It's really simple. You're just going to blend it in the blender, but we'll get to that later. And so this recipe is raw, vegan, gluten-free, full of whole plant-based, whole food ingredients. And it's great because it's actually, a lot of people get really intimidated with raw desserts, but it's actually... It's a lot easier to make, in my opinion, to make raw than it is to bake. Um, with raw desserts, most of the time you can fix a problem if you have a, if an issue arise or something goes wrong. Most of the time it is fixable. And so you never can really waste ingredients with raw desserts, which is why I love making raw desserts. And we're going to first start with the crust. So this is going to be the tart crust that we're going to be making. And I just want to talk a little bit about the crusts that I make and kind of the method behind my madness. So I have the recipe here out in front of me just so I can make sure I have everything right out in front of me. And so I love to do crusts that don't have dates in them. Number one, because we're using these removable tart pans. So you can get these off Amazon. So they have the removable bottom in them. And these are four inch tart pans you can get on Amazon. They're really easy to find. They come in a pack of four or six. And when you're doing a crust that doesn't have dried fruit in it, you don't need to line these. The crust will pop right out. If you do make a raw crust that has dates or that has dried fruit in it, it's gonna stick to the tart pan, so you're gonna have to line it. So this is also why I, I don't like using dried fruit, but also too, when you're eating raw desserts because they're I feel like, you know, they can get really heavy if they do have dates or dried fruit in it because when you're starting to mix dried fruits and fats then it kind of becomes a digestive nightmare. And then, you know, you just want to be able to eat things that are going to digest better and you're going to feel light and more energized after. The crust we're making, I also love this crust because it's actually a really nice firm kind of, I wouldn't call it a flaky crust because we're not dehydrating it, but You'll see, when you make this, you'll understand the difference of doing this kind of a crust over a crust with dates in it. It's a completely different texture, and I just love it a lot more. It's, um, it's great. So when you're making crusts, you want to use a food processor, and you always want to start with your dry ingredients first. 
uh, because we want to process everything into a flour consistency before we start adding the wet ingredients. As soon as you start adding the wet ingredients, everything is going to start sticking together, and so we don't want that. Now, we're using almonds in this recipe at the base, almonds and oats, and I'm using dry almonds which have been soaked and dehydrated. Now, you can just use regular dry almonds, or you can soak and dehydrate them if you have a dehydrator. I soak all of my nuts and dehydrate them, so an easy prep way, like an easy prep thing to do, is when I get my order in, my big bulk order, I'll do a big batch at once. I'll soak all my nuts and seeds just overnight. I'll rinse them really well and then I'll put them in the dehydrator and then I store them in the freezer so that I just have them ready to grab and go. I don't have to like wait for them to be soaked. Some recipes you need them wet, but in most all, like most of my press recipes, you need them dry. So I just like to have them on hand and it's just easier, much easier to do that that way. Okay, so what we're going to do, like I said, you want a food processor and we're going to process up all the dry ingredients first before we add in the wet ingredients. So we're going to put in the almonds. Okay. So Stephanie's going to be helping me. So this is, we're just going to kind of go with the flow. I've never had anyone join me for a live today, so we're going to see how this goes, but it's going to be fun to have someone help out. <laughs> And then we're going to add the oat flour. So this is just gluten-free rolled oats that have been blended in a blender. Um, I do also like to make my raw sprouted oat flour at home, but I wanted to make this really simple for you guys. And not everyone's going to have a dehydrator or the tools to make raw sprouted oat flour. So I've just taken rolled oats and I've just blended them in my high-speed blender. And I just want to show you the consistency so you can see it's really fluffy and it's blended really nice. So I've done this in a high speed blender. So we're putting in the oat flour. And then we're using some mesquite powder. Now those who know me here know how much I love mesquite powder. I'm going to get you to smell it. Oh man. It's like a caramel. It smells like so caramel good. Like caramel, hey? Yeah. How does that taste like just to eat? It's, uh, <laughs> oh, it's really good. It's sweet. So mesquite powder is, this is what mesquite powder looks like, you guys, for those who don't know. It is um, a little bit sweet and it's going to add body to the recipe as well as kind of this graham cracker taste. Mm. And so I love to add it in crust. I also put it in my smoothie every day. Um, it's really high in lysine and minerals, really uh, bad healthy for you and it just adds that extra oomph you don't need to add mesquite powder this is totally optional you can leave that out you can also add maca powder it would kind of give a similar flavor but it is a lot different still um, so if you don't have mesquite powder don't worry about it you don't have to use it and then we have some cinnamon of course because this is like a fall a fall dessert and you know we want that spice in there and then we're just going to add a tiny bit of salt. So what we're going to do is we're going to process this up until we get that flour consistency. And sometimes it takes a, a couple minutes and uh, you'll see that as we go. chunks in there and so I'm just going to check it just to make sure and so it looks like a flour consistency so this is what we want so now we're going to add in our coconut nectar and coconut oil so the coconut nectar I'm adding this is our sweetener you can use any kind of liquid sweetener you have on hand you can use agave maple syrup this is not only going to sweeten it, but it's also going to help stick everything together. It's going to help bind it together so that we're able to form it in our tart pans. And then we have coconut oil. So coconut oil is going to be our binder once it's set in the fridge because coconut oil goes solid, not totally solid, but it goes solid at room temperature. I mean, sorry, at 
in the in cool temperature. So this is what's going to help it set and also kind of bring everything together. So you'll see what I mean when I start processing here. Yeah, so you want to do this until it really starts sticking together. And a good way to check is I'll just put my hand in here and I'll press it together and if it's holding then I know it's done. So this looks good. Yay, so there we have our tart press. I mean look how easy that was. Super, super simple. You want to hand me those bowls? I'm going to put them in the Thank you. Okay, so now what you want to do is you'll see that I removed the blade out of the bin before I put my hand in there, just a safety precaution. So we have our lovely four inch tart pans here again with the removable bottom. So we're going to form our crust. So what I'm going to do is, because I want you guys to have a really good view, I'm going to start doing one, and then I'm going to bring the camera close so that you can see what we're doing uh, while we're doing the last two. Perfect. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab some of your tart crust, and you're going to form it together in your hands before you put it into the pan. And then you're just going to start pressing down. So here I have the crust. So I'm just going to press it firmly into the bottom of the pan. And the first time you guys do this, it's going to take a little bit longer. I mean, just like anything, the first time you do anything, right? But the more you do it, the more you practice, the quicker it'll take. And then I just start taking some of the crust and I start putting it into the edges like this. Because we want that nice edge in here. And if you put in too much, that's okay. I'm going to show you what to do, how to get rid of it. So now I'm going to start pressing with my thumbs around the edge like this. And I want to make sure that the bottom is thick enough, so I'm just going to add in a little bit more. Because we do want a nice sturdy base. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing there. So then, if you have a little bit too much, see as you're pressing the crust into the side here. You can just start removing it off the top. See what I'm doing there? So I'm just going to do the same thing all the way around. And everyone knows I have lots of students here joining so they all know how I like my tart crust nice and even. <laughs> So you don't have to be as picky as me. I mean, this is just, I like to just spend the extra time to make it really nice. So if you know you have the time, then just go, go nuts and get it as even as you can. And then I'm going to show you a little trick to get the bottom nice and even because we don't want those finger marks. So that when we cut into it, we're going to have a nice even layer. I'm just going to take the back of a small spoon and I'm just going to really smooth it out. So I'm just going to even it out with my spoon like this. Awesome. Thank you, you guys. Okay. So now, now that I have the bottom all nice, I'm just going to press the top like this just to make sure 
Okay, so there we go. So there is our beautiful form tart crust. Doesn't that look pretty? And you can see, I can actually push it out right now, but don't do this. I just want to show you how nice it looks on the edges there. But we don't want to do that until it's fully set. So there we have one of the crusts. So I'm going to move you guys back. We're going to finish the other two crusts. Good. Perfect. So that's how we make our, we form our beautiful raw tart crust. Super simple. And again, you don't have to take as much time as I did. Um, but again, like I said, the more you do it, the easier it's going to be. So Stephanie, Stephanie and I are going to do the last two. So first I'll just grab a little bit here. I'm going to use in. And then you can, can start. I'm here to show you how doing something terribly easy can look very difficult. <laughs> no, you're all good. And if there's any questions, I can answer them now as well. And so you can see how nice it's sticking together without the use of dates. You know, we don't have to rely on dates in raw food for everything. Um, you can get a similar texture and consistency without them. And so this is a good way to show you guys. And this recipe is actually a lot like the butternut squash cream chocolate bars that I had just posted and Stephanie tried them. Oh my goodness. She absolutely loves them. And um, I basically just took, so I took the crust recipe from my pumpkin pie tart that I have on the website. And then the filling from the butternut squash uh, chocolate bars and then um, the chocolate sauce is a new recipe that you guys have there but yeah so it was just kind of a play on the chocolate bars because the chocolate bars also have the ginger chocolate layer in there as well see is it difficult not at all <laughs> even for go. me <laughs> that's perfect okay, it's not as beautiful as yours but hey no, it it's looks not so good. bad. <laughs> Just the only thing is it's a lot of crust. And we want to be able to taste some of the filling. We want some filling with our crust. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove a tiny bit off the top. But you did an awesome job. Oh, thank you. See, this was Stephanie's first time. So if Stephanie can do it, you guys can all do this. I'm just removing a little bit of the crust because um, otherwise it's just going to be too crust heavy. <laughs> it's not for and just to show you guys see how easy it was to fix that and I'm just going to do this nice and then take the back of the spoon and just even it out perfect so there we have our three tart crusts, all ready to go with our filling. Beautiful. Super simple. So if you guys don't want to use the mini tart pans, you guys can use a regular 8 inch tart pan. I like to do everything small. Um, it just makes a really nice serving size and also I just find it looks so much better. Everything looks better smaller <laughs> for some reason when you're dealing with like pies and cakes and that sort of thing. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to just clear everything so that we can get started on the filling. So the reason why I love to use butternut squash over pumpkin, and actually I'll just show you guys what butternut squash looks like. So this is a butternut squash. This is what they look like. And the reason why I absolutely love using this over pumpkin is because it is so much easier to prep. <laughs> really is the main reason why and you can produce almost the same taste and consistency as using pumpkin um, because all you have to do is i just cut the butternut squash here because the seeds are in this part right here so the seeds of the butternut squash are in this part there's no seeds in this part right here so you just cut it off and then you just peel this part with a peeler you don't have to peel it with a knife it peels really easily with just a peeler and then you just chop it into cubes like this so it's so much easier to handle than trying to cut up a pumpkin because uh, pumpkins have so much seeds and the the outside is really hard to peel with you have to have a really good knife mm. so 
is just a lot easier to work with. When you measure out the butternut squash, you wanna make sure that everything is cubed up really nice so it's a lot easier to measure, so it looks like this. And this butternut squash was very orange. You can see how orange that is. It's usually not this orange, so I got a really, really nice one, which was perfect. So we have one and a half Ingrid. Yes, it does taste so much better raw. So we, um, Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> We're using butternut squash raw, and I get this question a lot because a lot of people think that you have to cook it in order to use it. I make butternut squash noodles, so you can you can eat most of the squash is raw. Um, you want it to, it's obviously, it's not gonna taste the same as when you cook it, but it's just gonna have so much more nutrients, and if you use them as noodles, you can get a really nice texture. Um, I, I make them with like an almond butter dressing. I have a recipe on my website for that. Um, yeah, so using butternut squash raw is a uh, really good, really good health benefit. Same with pumpkin. You can use pumpkin raw. I have a raw pumpkin salad recipe on my website as well. So this is how we want to prep the butternut squash. And you want to make sure that none of your ingredients are cold before we start using doing this recipe. You want to make sure they're all at room temperature because we're going to be using cacao butter in the recipe and oh actually I'm going to talk about that when I get to it because I want to talk about how to melt it down okay so this recipe is super simple you're just going to literally blend everything um, and we're going to put in the cacao butter last and I'll tell you why I don't have that written on the recipe because unless if your ingredients are not cold then you don't have to worry about it because when you add in the cacao butter with cold ingredients it starts setting and then it's going to be harder to blend so I just let as a fail as a fail safe. I just like to add it in last, just in case. So we're gonna put in our butternut squash. Then we have coconut sugar. This is gonna help sweeten it up. And you can use if you like using cane sugar. You can use cane sugar if you don't have um, if you don't have coconut sugar. I just like to keep everything as low glycemic as possible. We're also using a bit of coconut nectar. So we're using both sweeteners just to give it kind of a sweetener boost and just give it a little bit more of a caramelly taste. And then we're using full fat coconut milk. So this is full fat coconut milk from a can. And usually I don't like to do that, uh, but I wanna make sure that it's really nice and thick and creamy. You can also make your own coconut cream by blending shredded coconut, mixing it with water, and then straining it through a nut milk bag, like you would nut milk. And then it's my secret ingredient in this recipe, you guys, tahini. <laughs> yeah, so we're using roasted tahini. You can use raw, whatever floats your boat. And this is just going to add a really nice depth of flavor. It's really nice. And then of course we have our pumpkin spice because we want this to be kind of, you know, mimic a pumpkin pie recipe. And then we're adding sunflower lecithin. Now most of the people who know, who know me knows how much I love using lecithin in my recipes. It acts as an emulsifier because it's gonna help bind all of the liquids and fats together. It just makes everything so much more creamy. And again, this is totally optional. You don't have to use uh, sunflower lecithin. If you don't have it, that's fine. It's still going to work out just great. It just adds that something extra. It's just going to help it get a lot creamier and just really help everything emulsify together. And, oh, oh do I need salt in this one? Yeah. Just a tiny bit of salt. Pinch of salt. So I'm going to start blending this up. And I'm probably gonna need my tamper. So when you're using a Vitamix, you always wanna start on low and then increase your speed to high.
melt the cacao butter. And this is how I melt my cacao butter. I just boil water in a kettle and then I put it in a bowl. And you wanna make sure that these are gonna be the exact same size. So this is, this is basically just double boiler method. And then you're gonna put this on top and the cacao butter will melt in here. So I always like to leave it on here until I wanna use it because it will start setting really fast. And we're going to be putting in three tablespoons of the melted cacao butter. Do you want to do the sure. honors? I'll do the honors. Mm. It's smelling really good, you guys. I'll just show you the texture. So this is what the texture looks like before I add the cacao butter. Now these are level. Yeah, so a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Okay, perfect. One. Yeah, and level. So you want to make sure that the full that the tablespoon is full. Okay. And so the cacao butter is going to act as the setting agent, right? So when we put it in the fridge or the freezer, it's going to help set everything together because we're not baking. In raw food, you're going to need setting agents that go cool at uh, when you put them in the fridge or freezer so that it helps set everything together. That's delightful. Yeah. And I'm using cacao butter because it's a little bit of a stronger setting agent, right, than coconut oil. And um, so I'm not using a ton, as you can see. And I want that nice chocolatey taste because we're going to be putting chocolate sauce on top. So now I'm just going to put this on low. Because the butternut squash, butternut squashes are always really different and really different in taste. Some are going to be more ripe than others. Some are going to be less ripe. So we just want to make sure that we have the taste down. We want to just make sure it tastes yummy, it's flavor balanced. Mm, yes. Mm, no, I could put in a bit more sweetener. I'm going to make Actually, the sweeter taste. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put in some, probably just a tablespoon more of coconut nectar. That's what I just used. So you can use maple syrup or agave if you don't have coconut nectar. Do you want to have a taste? Well, I feel like I should taste oh. it, but also you should, yeah. just in case. For sure. Mm -hmm. That's better. Mm. And it's going to taste totally different mm. when it's set and when we have all of the yummy toppings on top. So we don't want this super sweet, right, you guys? Because, I mean, this is not a super sweet dessert. Mm. And, yeah, it tastes amazing. Okay, so we're going to fill in the butternut squash cream tarts now. So I want to make sure you guys have a good view. So all you're going to do, so I'm going to do one and then you can do one. Okay. You're just going to pour it. Now the trick when you're doing this is you don't want to overfill it, okay? Because it's easier. You can take some out of it, but it's just easier to make it look level and nice when you don't overfill it. And I'm just going to show you how I do that. So I just poured some in and you just want to even it out. And you can see that I need just a little bit more. So that's perfect. So again, you don't want to go crazy. You want to make sure that it's really nice and level. So there is our first tart. So I'm patting it on the counter here just to remove some of the air bubbles and really even it up. Okay, so there's one. You want to do the honors second one? Sure. Um. I'll make sure I don't mess this up. <laughs> Just go slow. Be patient. Is that too much? No, nope, you can do more. 
do a little bit more. Okay, and then now let's see. Yeah, Ooh. let's tap it and then feel good. Oh, see, I made a boo boo. Oh, that's okay. Take it off. <laughs> no big deal. You just want to tap it. Yeah, see, that's perfect. This is a very simple recipe. Very easy. Yes. <laughs> right? Now you see. It's... You know, I'm four things like a four year old. It just <laughs> pours and goes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All good. So you will have some extra filling left over, but that's okay. You can put it into a container and when it's set in the fridge, you can eat it like a mousse. It's really good. Or I just like, I just put it into a cup with some of the coconut whipped cream and the chocolate sauce. Yeah, I could do that easily. So never have to go waste. <laughs> So there we go. We have our three tarts all ready to go. So because I'm impatient and I like things to be done quick, I put them in the freezer so that they set fast. You can also set them in the fridge. It's totally up to you. Um, but like I said, I'll just put it in the freezer to set quicker. Um, but don't worry, we have some already set for you guys that we're going to decorate, but we're going to get onto the coconut cream. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in the freezer. And we can just put them in like this. So many tarts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was really simple, right you guys? Doesn't have to be complicated. All right. So I wanted to show you guys how to make this coconut whipped cream just because it's super simple. And not everybody has access to coconut meat. Um, I do make a really nice coconut whipped cream that from scratch from coconut meat uh, that we do in the online course that everyone absolutely loves, including myself. And so if you can find a really good quality of coconut cream, so this is the Chaz Organics Coconut Whipping Cream. Um, it's a Canadian company and I'm pretty sure that you can get it in the States. And this is my, I just tried this the other day actually you guys and this is why I wanted to show you guys how to use this. And the ingredients are super simple. It's just organic coconut water and organic to tapioca starch. There's no guar gum, there's no, like it just has really good ingredients, a lot better than most of the full fat premium coconut milk you can get. So you just put this in the fridge so that it sets um, and usually just put it in overnight. And I've already taken some, I've already taken it out and put it in a bowl. And this is what it looks like when you remove it from the can after it's set. Um, and then so you want to put it in a big mixing bowl like this. Because we're going to have fun and use the hand mixer. This is the first time I've used the hand mixer on um, a live with you guys. I don't even use this in my course. Again, because you know, I like to try to do everything from scratch, but not everyone always has the ingredients available. So this is a really, really simple way to get around that. So once we have the coconut whipped cream, you can just whip it like this to make the whipping cream, but I always like to add a little bit of extra stuff because that's just how I roll. So we're gonna add some sweetener and I'm gonna add some coconut nectar. And you'll see I have on the recipe there um, I think I said like two tablespoons to quarter cup, depending on how sweet you want it. I just eyeballed it. I probably put in like three tablespoons. And then we're going to, of course, put in some pumpkin spice. Because the pumpkin spice in the coconut whipped cream is the best. Mm -hmm. And I just eat this like by itself. It's pretty addicting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to... Mix it, I'm going to start on low and increase to high. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> 
my first time. smooth and fluffy that looks and super simple um, so yeah if you guys you know want to make a really quick coconut whipped cream really easy to do I'm just going to show you the texture so this is what the texture looks like really nice and smooth and it's a little bit darker because I put in the pumpkin spice but that's okay, I actually really like it. Okay, so now for the grand finale. We are going to get the tarts, if you want to just grab them from the tray. Do you want, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna get a nice cutting board instead of the screen. So I've had the pumpkin, uh, the, I always want to say pumpkin. <laughs> I always had the butter, I had the butternut squash cream tarts in the fridge, just thawing. So you can do that. If you have them in the freezer, you can put them in the fridge just to thaw them out for a few hours. Sylvia, please come over, Sylvia, and get some tarts for me because I'm not going to be able to eat these all by myself. No, I'm serious. Please come get some. See, so I'm going to set up my piping bag with the coconut whipped cream. So this is, everyone knows that I love using the 1M tip. It's kind of like become my signature way of uh, decorating now. <laughs> just because it's so easy, really simple. Oh, actually, we're going to cut them. No, I'll just set it up first. So I just have the 1M tip in my piping bag. I'm using a small piping bag, so I'm going to use a small spoon to get it in here. So I haven't used um, this coconut whipped cream with in a piping bag yet, so this is going to be a good test to see how it holds up. Oh, it's going to be good. Perfect. Yay. And then we have our chocolate sauce. So what I'm going to do, perfect. I'm going to grab this. I want to go over the chocolate sauce with you guys actually before we um, start decorating because I'm not going to demo this for you guys because we have a lot to go through but I'm just going to walk you through the recipe so if you have the download in front of you I'm just going to go over it and talk about it so this is what the ginger chocolate sauce looks like this is a really nice Look at how nice and thick and smooth that is. Oh, it's so good, you guys. You guys are gonna love this. And you can use this on anything, right? Not just for this, for this tart. So when you're making the ginger chocolate sauce, okay, it's very important to blend everything first except for the ginger and the water. Because when we're dealing with chocolate, chocolate's really finicky, right? We don't want it to start setting or separating before we've added in our wet liquidy ingredients. So you're gonna blend the first ingredients together and you'll see that on the recipe. So the cacao powder, the cacao butter, the coconut oil, the coconut sugar, and the vanilla. And then you're gonna add in the fresh grated ginger and then you're gonna blend that up on low again. And then you're gonna add in the warm water. So what the warm water does to this is it actually is going to create this thick consistency, almost like a ganache. But you know, this is more like a sauce. So that's what the warm water is going to do. So very, and yeah, chocolate is fun that way. So that's how you make the chocolate sauce. And if you guys have any questions when you're making it, just please email me, send me a message. I'd be happy to help. But it's a really good recipe. And yeah, you guys are going to love it. So 
Sylvia, yes, I'll save some for you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get my good knife. Need my nice knife out for this so I can get a nice clean cut. And that's really important, you guys, when you're cutting your raw desserts, you do, you need a really good knife to get a really nice, clean, sharp cut. And so I just like to cut this into fours. And then I know that's a really nice single serving size. Okay. And then I want to grab a plate, probably a white one. Let me go grab it. We'll grab two, obviously, for each of us. I mean, you could eat this whole tart by itself. That's what I usually do. <laughs> but uh, we're going to make some nice, cute pieces here on the plate. <laughs> I'm just going to move this out of the way. And then we're going to take our coconut cream. I'm going to do one and then you can do yours. And we're going to hold the piping bag like this, okay, to make sure that it's sturdy. And I'm just going to do this. Super easy. <laughs> oh, I wanted to put the chocolate sauce on first. Oh. Wow. Well, that's okay. You can put it on the plate. So you hold it like this. Okay, so first let's make sure that everything is down at the bottom. And we want to twist this. Okay. Oops. Ah. <laughs> you want to twist this? Yeah, and so you're going to hold it straight up and down like this. Okay. And then you're going to squeeze with the hand that's holding the, okay. the bag. See? Super easy. Awesome! Yay! And fun. there is our beautiful coconut whipped cream on our pumpkin tart, as you can see. And then we have our chocolate sauce. I just wanted to add chocolate sauce to this because everyone knows how much I'm obsessed with chocolate. And I mean, why not? Chocolate and butternut squash, you know, pumpkin, they all go so good together. And you can put this in a squeeze bottle. If you don't have a squeeze bottle, you can use a piping bag. And I mean, you can do a couple different ways. You can either put this on the plate before you put the pumpkin tart on. I'm going to do a test. I'm just going to, uh, you know, just do something really easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. I'm gonna put that on just like that. And then we have some pumpkin seeds. I love these pumpkin seeds. These ones are my favorite. So these are jumbo pumpkin seeds and Organic Traditions sells them. So they look like this. These are the jumbo ones. They're nice, a nice dark green color. Here you wanna decorate your plate. Go nuts. Oh, actually that looks cute just like that. I'm dropping everything. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So here we have our beautiful butternut squash cream tart, you guys, with the chocolate sauce and the coconut whipped cream and some pumpkin seeds on top. Super simple. So I mean, super easy, right you guys? I just did that. Oh, that's okay. It just flies. So it still doesn't taste good. Oops, sorry. Let's taste this. Let's have a bite. I wanna show you guys the yummy consistency of this. So look how good that looks. Look how creamy, creamy, yummy. Get some of that chocolate sauce in there. You can get more. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. So good. Wow. Right? Like I could use some more coconut whipped cream. 
I can put some more coconut whipped cream on here, you guys. I'm gonna need the full piece, the full tart. Yeah, you can even put the coconut whipped cream. Now I wanna do another tart to show you guys. So I like to decorate everything after I cut it just because it's a lot easier and if you're like serving it to someone, it just looks so much nicer. But say if you wanna gift a tart to someone whole like this, I'm gonna add some more coconut cream in here. Let me take that out because you like it. I think she likes it. You've lost your helper because I'm now indisposed. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. I'm gonna add some more in here. I'll get to all your guys' comments in one second. So you can also decorate it like this. We're just gonna put these, we're just gonna cover the whole pie like this. There. That's so cute. Yeah, and then you can, uh, maybe the rest of the pumpkin seeds will be too big. You could like drizzle this or um, put some sifted coconut sugar and cinnamon on top. Maybe I will put some pumpkin seeds. But, like, don't go crazy with them because otherwise it's going to overpower. There we go. Very cute. So there's a second way of decorating it. I've just covered the top with the coconut whipped cream and just added some pumpkin seeds on top. So you can serve it like this as well if you're gifting it to someone. Yeah, so there we go, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I was really excited to do this live with you all today because it had been a long time since I had done one and I missed you all so much. And if you guys have any questions while you're making this, please just ask and I'd be super happy to help. But as you can see, it's a very simple recipe. It's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Really easy, probably easier than baking. It's you know, it's easier. easy to come up with something healthy and nutritious and, mm -hmm. and taste really good, right? Because not only do we want it to be healthy, but we want it to taste really good too. Yeah, it's hard to believe that that is healthy because it yeah. tastes so good. <laughs> awesome. I'm hungry, so we're going to get to eat. So <laughs> thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys all joining and you guys all have an awesome day and yeah, have a great rest of your Saturday and weekend.